In many applications, we need to compute powers of matrices. For example, when we are computing matrix exponentials functions to solve differential equations. We will first take a look at the case of 2x2 two two matrices. Why 2x2? Well, there are several reasons. 1. If you cannot do 2x2, two two, you certainly cannot deal with bigger matrices, so it is an obvious starting point. 2. The different 2x2 two two cases we encounter already show a lot of variation. Most bigger matrices do not really show more variation, but are merely becoming technically more complicated. So, if you can do 2x2, two two, you can do most of the bigger matrices. And 3. Uh, bigger matrices become really annoying, really fast computationally. So, what do we already know about 2x2 two two matrices? If we have two real eigenvalues, we can either diagonalize or use the Jordan normal form for two equal eigenvalues if we want to compute powers of matrices. But what about matrices with complex eigenvalues? In that case, we can use a complex diagonalization with complex matrices. However, it is much more convenient to use some special real matrices, the so-called scaling rotation matrices. In this video, we will learn what they are and why they are called scaling rotation matrices. So let us have a look. So what is a scaling rotation matrix? We will call those C matrices. It is a real matrix C, two by two, of the following form. The elements here are the same, A and A, and the elements over here, the off-diagonal ones, are the same up to a sign. So a scaling rotation matrix is determined by two numbers, A and B. So if you fix the first one A, you fix the second one B, then the other two, A and minus B, are also specified. And we also impose a condition B is not equal to zero, because, well, if you put B to zero, it becomes a bit silly. And you just have a, a diagonal matrix. So we usually look at matrices where we have B non-zero. So why is this called a scaling rotation matrix? Well, the matrix is determined by two numbers, A and B, and a point in the plane is also determined by two numbers, A and B. So let us see what happens if we uh, look at the point P with coordinates A and B. Then it will become clear uh, in a while why this matrix is called a scaling rotation matrix. So we put the point P in the plane with coordinates A and B, and then we can describe P also in terms of its polar coordinates R and theta, where R is the distance until the origin and theta is the angle with the positive x-axis. You know how to convert these, you know that we then have A equals R cosine theta and b equals r sine theta. But what does this have to do with matrices? Well, instead of using a and b in the matrix, we can also use r and theta, because both a and b fully specify the matrix and r and theta. So what happens if we do that? So we started with the matrix in terms of a and b, and then we can say, okay, instead of using a and b to specify my matrix, I also can substitute a equals r cosine theta and b equals r theta theta. In this way, I also have all uh, matrices. So plug this in over here. And then you notice that you can take the factor r out. That is what we do here. And we, have a, we are left with a matrix only dependent on theta. And then we see something nice happening. We have this factor r, and we recognize this matrix. It is a so-called rotation matrix. This matrix, which is left here, we call it R theta, is rotating vectors over an angle theta uh, counterclockwise. So we can write any C matrix in this form as a product of a scaling factor R and a rotation matrix R theta. So what does a scaling rotation matrix do? It scales vectors over factor R and rotates vectors 
of an angle theta. So let's do a small example. Here we have a, the example of a C matrix. C, these elements are the same and these only the first sign. The question is find R and theta. So how do we do that? First we determine A and B. We read off A equals 1 and B equals minus 1. And then we can immediately determine R because we know R squared equals A squared plus B squared, for example from this figure. And then you see immediately R equals square root of 2. So we have a scaling factor of square root of 2. And then we determine theta. We plug in uh, A equals R cosine theta and B equals R sine theta. And we can solve for theta. For the first equation, we see that we have theta equals pi over 4 or minus pi over 4. And using the second equation, we see that we have our theta equals minus pi over 4. We always take our, pick our thetas between minus pi and pi. Of course, you could add factors of 2 pi, but that doesn't do anything. It just rotates everything along the entire circle. So when picking thetas, we always pick them for us. our scaling rotation matrices between minus pi and pi, and in this specific example we found theta equals minus pi over 4.